But how can you have a democracy with censorship? So you want to know the best measure of the health of a democracy? We're a constitutional republic, but I'll use lowercase d democracy as a fill-in, right? It's got, couldn't resist. It's got, People always applaud at that. I love that. It's just the truth, though, right? No, it is true. Republic. But the civics majors love it. Yeah, this, yeah, that's great. But the, the, the best measure of the health of our American democracy, our constitutional republic, is the percentage of people who feel free to say what they actually think in public. That's the metric. It's not the number of ballots cast every November. That's just going through the motions. It is not some other metric of what the media says on a given day. It's the percentage of people who will say in public what they're willing to say behind closed doors. There's no doubt we're doing poorly. The culture is censorious enough. Now, if you say the government on top of that is using social media companies to do through the back door what government could not censor through the front door under the Constitution, that creates the real threat to lowercase d democracy. My, my litmus test is if Vladimir Putin was doing it and we would call it a threat to democracy, it's a threat to democracy when we do it on this side of the Atlantic as well. Okay, that's a good way of not pointing the finger at somebody else but looking ourselves in the mirror and asking ourselves who we really are. And I, this is personal for me. I'm a Republican candidate for U.S. president. It feels still new to say that. <laughs> not a politician by nature, but I bring that fact up. You know, now, as a very recently, certainly polling reasonably well in, in the recent polls, and I bring that up because against that backdrop, Microsoft owned LinkedIn, censored my social media account. They locked my account, said I can't get in to make statements that are factually grounded statements about climate change, about Biden's relationship with China about the ESG movement's perpetuation of a climate cult in this country, all grounded in fact, saying that it violates their policies for hate speech misinformation. <laughs> and I'm not making this one up, they said violence in, yeah. in, in, the, in the email. And so in my case, look, I was able to publicize that. They were then claimed it was a, an error, <laughs> restored the account, typical operating procedure. But it's that culture of censorship in our country that I think we also, I, I'm trying to do my part, where I was in Ottumwa, Eastern Iowa, earlier this week. Smaller event than this, but we're on the stage talking. Somebody walks in. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. At first, I thought, usually if they're screaming, sometimes they're, they're, they're in favor of what you're saying. So I said, thank you. But I realized that actually, no, she... <laughs> when, when she bit you, you realized? <laughs> she, she, she came... <laughs> so, so, so she was... She was uh, she was out of control, okay? Yeah. I, I know her. Yeah. <laughs> I ran into her at Dulles Airport last week. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've, all, we've all seen a version of her. But, 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 the, but the truth is, so security was escorting her out. And, and I, I, it felt wrong to me, right? Because she came here to make a point. She was totally wild in the way she was making But I'm watching her walk out the door. She's at the back of the room now. And I said, this doesn't feel right. Right, because as I said earlier, you tell people they can't speak, that's when they scream. You tell people they can't scream, and she was screaming. That's when they're going to go tear something down. So I said, no, bring her back. We gave her the mic. I said, say, I promised. You ask your question, but I promise I get to answer it in return. She agrees to that. It turns out she's a pro-choice advocate, a my body, my choice person. I was going to the state legislature on Tuesday morning. I think she must have known that. Came to this event to protest my being there. But I give her the mic. She's just talking for, you know, three, four, five minutes. But by the end of it, it actually turns out, the story comes out that she's a single mother who did bring her daughter into the world. And the things she was saying were things like, my daughter is successful. I don't want you to look down on me. And I thought it was beautiful that the more she started talking, the more she started making our very point of why we believe in protecting life. And so I said, disagreements aside, you are a mother. We celebrate that. The audience applauded. It's why I love Iowans. Wow. She broke down in tears and left. And so I'm just, I'm moved by what is possible in our country. Our country is broken. We are spiritually broken. We have a spiritual void in this country. It is our job to step up and fill that void by practicing what we preach as conservatives. And so I'm hoping we're doing that. I love doing that in Iowa. It's been, it's been something that's really lifted me up in a way that was never an experience I had as a CEO or in business. I've never had these experiences as we've had in the last few months. And honestly, as broken as our country is, it leaves me optimistic about where we're headed.